Salute to Knicks Nation, Sunday edition podcast, Sunday conversation, CP from the Knicks Fan TV. I got my man, JLs from the Nick of Time show, special guest, friend of the program. We were supposed to have him on the show earlier this season, JLs. We, we've been waiting a long time for David to join us, man. Yeah, what happened, man? What did you do? CP, you ran him off? I, I, I think it's a Hollywood stuff, man. It's that, uh, like, have you, I think it's that, like, have your people call my people type of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's right. No, I told you to contact my agents, and you didn't. You know, that, I told you to stop contacting me directly. That, that's it, man. Exactly. But, but we got uh, actor and Knicks fan David Fudenick joining us today. David, how's it going, man? Good, good. Thanks for having me on, fellas. I'm glad we're finally doing this. Absolutely, man. Definitely. Uh, I'm glad to have you on. So... You're a former New Yorker. Well, you're always a New yep. Yorker. Once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker. Absolutely. But but currently um, residing out west. Currently in Los Angeles. I, I miss New York every day. But at this point, I've lived here for almost 10 years. So, you know. Yeah, that, um, that's rough. Vastly removed from the city, unfortunately. How, do, how have you uh, navigated? Because you're a Long Island guy too, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so from a, a pizza and bagel standpoint, the, the national so, food of Long Island. That's fact. How, how have you survived out West, man? Uh, with a lot of tacos. No, not a bad, not a bad trade off at all. Um, no, the, the, it's funny. Like the longer you're here, the more you talk yourself into like the garbage ass pizza and bagels here you're like you know what this place isn't bad yeah. it's like uh, actually it's it's not that great uh, who, who needs a <laughs> uh, who needs a bacon egg and cheese from a deli when you can get a breakfast burrito I yeah exactly exactly. <laughs> exactly oh yeah miss the corner store bacon egg and cheese in the morning with the little blue cup of coffee oh, yeah not the same not the same not not the same man but you know what like you said man la definitely has its perks that that's like my second home my wife's family's from la so Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, it's it's hard to argue with the weather and, you know, the, the lifestyle is nice and laid back. But definitely, especially during the, the Knicks and Yankees seasons, I'm sad that I can't go to games, so. Yeah. Nah, I, I hear you, man. I hear you. But we're holding it down out here, nevertheless. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? Absolutely. And um, obviously, we're at a, a critical juncture of our fanhood yeah. here as Knicks fans. To say the least. Holding on with bated breath for a lot of things to happen. Yep. So I mean to I mean take us back to, to your fanhood. Like when did you really start, you know, becoming a, a, a diehard Knicks fan? Like what were some of your favorite moments as a kid? Oh man. I mean uh definitely like Early, early 90s, every Saturday morning, NBA on NBC. Shit. Uh, I, I guess I was probably, like, a big fan of the game itself before I was, like, a certified Knicks fan. But, um, but certainly, um, you know, those early 90s teams is, is what got me. I was a huge, huge Patrick Ewing fan. Um, and then I loved uh, the sort of the, the second iteration when, you know, in Pat's last days. I was a, a, a huge uh, Camby fan, huge uh, Allen Houston fan. So, yes, yeah, those uh, those days seem far be- far behind us now. But seem, seem, but seem I like do, many moons ago, man. A vivid vivid memories of uh, the '94 Finals. I was so pumped up. My my parents had to console me after Game Seven. That was maybe the only time I ever cried after a sporting event. That was uh, that was brutal. I was I was ten years old. That was very very hard to stomach, especially since they were up three two. Yeah, uh, but, that was uh, a tough one to take. Man. But you know, uh, we weren't the only ones that uh, had bad memories in that era. Mo- most of them involved Michael Jordan just playing out of his mind. The the goat man, his, his goat. airness, jails. Oh, I can't, I can't stand Mike. The the Night King. <laughs> I still, yeah, I still don't. I mean, I respect him. I still the don't. the real life night king. <laughs> I have an autographed uh, picture uh, from John Starks of him, you know, quote unquote, dunking on Jordan, and it's funny, like the angle of it, it's taken perfectly to look like he's really dunking on him, and it's like, yeah, no, we could, we could. 
we can revisit history and 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 uh, and say, well, no, he definitely dunked on him, but he kind of dunked on Horace Grant more than Jails. No, no, the, no, dunk no. Was, the dunk was such a myth. But we, <laughs> no, that's we, not the way I remember it. I'm sorry. We, we embraced. No, no, as a kid, I was like, oh, we dunked on Jordan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to this day, we 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 accept that. Even right. To the contrary, Jails is crazy, man. What about Jay else? What about you, man? What what was your uh, I guess some of your favorite moments as a fan? Seems like we're all around the same age. So yeah. yeah. My Maybe favorite you know. moments, man. I think like I'm 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 a big Allen Houston fan myself. Yeah. So the shot, man. The shot when oh, the yeah. runner, when he when he shot the little floater and you're hanging around the rim <laughs> and he and it drops in the playoffs and he pumps his fist in victory. Yeah, that was mine. It seemed like that ball was like bouncing up in the air for like an hour. For forever. Yes. <laughs> forever. It was one of those shots where you just remember where you were. That yeah. was my favorite moment too. I got it hanging up in the studio right here, looking at it right now. And it, it was just everything. Like the the magnitude of the series, Pat Riley, yeah. you know, I, I to this day like these you, young kids don't understand the hatred. Not a don't no. from the Miami Heat as long as Pat Riley's sitting. They remember the bit the bench being emptied and yeah, <laughs> fights. They, 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 they don't cost that, the so. open legs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, like, that punch from Camby when he reached from from hell. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> the punch and he missed that guy because somebody would have died to connect with that punch. <laughs> oh, when Camby almost took off Danny Ferry's head, but took yeah. off Jeff Van Gundy's head instead. Wow, I've never seen somebody reach back so far in my life. <laughs> oh, that was that was crazy, man. What what about your your most hated Nick? Who who do you think who would rank as as your most hated Nick? Since hated Nick, yeah, who's who's? Oh, who's there's the so Nick many like from the last, in the last twenty years. There's you know, there's a lot. I I I I I hate Barnyani just because yes, he, it was such an embarrassment to oh. the team. Just that yeah. that whole trade was such an embarrassment. But I also I, – I just hate Chris Dudley. I, I always found him, like, <laughs> the most garbage, garbage player. And then he's, like, kind of poked his beak into, like, politics now. He was, like, supporting Kavanaugh during those hearings and stuff. Yeah, like, like, Chris Dudley, where did you come yeah, from? Yeah. And why do we care what you have to say about this? Who the hell cares about what Chris Dudley has to say about politics? Let alone, if I don't care what he has to say about the NBA, let alone Yeah, politics. right. Let alone, <laughs> let alone politics, man. Yeah, well, me, those two, those two have to be up there. Uh, on the on the Chris Dudley wave jails. I went to the um the Mitch Mitchell Robinson appearance at the NBA store earlier this week, oh, and I, so yeah. and so me and Dave are are we're kind of like outside of the line, like talking to the fans that are that are waiting to go see Mitch. And one of the guys is like, "Yeah, that dude right there, he reminds me of Dudley." Oh. And I said, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Me and the, me and one of the security guards are looking at each other like, wait, what did this this dude just say? Wow, Mitchell Robinson, he wants to be like Chris Dudley, and like, oh my god, man, I, I wanted to disengage from the conversation so fast. How'd you get out of there? I, I just, well, <laughs> luckily enough, the line was moving, so he had no choice but to like disengage himself. So. That was kind of like my saving grace, man. But that was a tough take, man. God, God forbid Mitch ever turns into Chris Dudley, man. Nah, oh, um, Mitch is baby Shaq, if you all remember correctly. We all know what Shaq did to Dudley, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm tall. Yeah. That, you, you can't help but see it on Instagram every time, man. Exactly. According to Trey Burke, Mitchell Robinson is baby Shaq. I mean, Mitch is uh, Mitch separated himself for sure in the second half of the season. Mitch is Mitch is a special talent. I, you know, I I worry sometimes about him being such a valuable piece that if the if an AD trade mm. is on the table, that he could be somehow involved. But I I just I hope he's wearing a Knicks jersey for a long time. He's he's so special. The Jail. other guys, yeah, go ahead, man. The other guys are projects. Obviously, Knox had like had some fantastic moments, and he had a lot of head scratchy moments. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't like his body language sometimes. When his shots aren't falling, man, he just he he does 
stupid stuff on the defensive end. He steps yeah. out of bounds. He, and then, he, you know, he just he, – he clearly gets in his own head a lot. But he's also, so. you know, 19, 19 years old. I, I try to think of myself when I was 19 and, you know, being, being under the, the hot lights of MSG like that, you know. That's <laughs> not, For 82 games, you know, they threw him into the fire from game yeah. one, man. Exactly. And, all, you know, and, and Fizz just played him so hard. I mean, yeah, he, he did. He, so he, many minutes. He, he was but, racking up, uh, you know, 30, 30 plus minute nights uh, on back to back nights sometimes. You know, I wonder if, like, if Mitch had been the first round pick and he had been the second round pick, you know, if we had, it, we, we would give him a much longer leash than we did this season. Absolutely. Um, Definitely. Uh, so we got supremely lucky with Mitch. And I think Knox has a lot of promise, but, uh, you know, uh, it was, wasn't always pretty this year. We'll put it that way. And same goes for Trier. I, um, I'm a little concerned about, like, those reports that came out about, like, guys on the team not wanting to play with him. In I, couldn't, I couldn't believe that shit. That was surprising, man. right? I, JLs, what, what were you saying about it? I couldn't believe that shit. Um, well, I'll say this. The reports weren't even guys on the team. The reports were veterans. So if it was veterans, quotes, the veterans aren't here no more. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of people said it was Tim Hardaway Jr. Yeah, right. that right. was right. exactly his revenge. Right. If that was true, then the veterans aren't here anymore. And funny enough, the veterans who were on this team beforehand didn't pass either. So that that would just kind of be ironic that they would say Trier doesn't pass, but like all the veterans got shipped out. Aren't, you know, you know what? Just, that man. was Timmy, man. Or or um, or even worse, it was probably Tim Senior. He's trying to right. stick his neck. Uh, I'm telling you, man. I could never <laughs> trust. I could never trust that Timmy acquisition as long as Tim Senior's in the garden. It was like right. a snake. It's, it'd be the snake in Eden, man. That's so true. That's so true. I mean, it, it had to be Timmy, right? Because it's the only person who would ever complain about not getting the ball in scrimmage. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> who else would be pissed about not getting the ball in the scrimmage? Couldn't get his probably 20 shots in, in scrimmage. Yeah. Yeah, it probably was Timmy. Remember they got into it um, oh, yeah. Oh, early, yeah. earlier this season. They, they got right, into right. A, little, a little skirmish on the sideline. It probably was Timmy, man. Yeah, his thirty, his twenty shots a game at thirty-seven percent probably was Timmy. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, man. I mean, listen, I, I loved. Um, we, we lucked out, I thought, with with drafting these kids, man. With absolutely with Knox, Mitch was was a complete surprise. You know, he was certainly what I was looking for in the second round. Remember, Jay else, we were doing those um, those mock drafts, and I was like, we need uh, at least a backup big. Like, we yeah. have no bigs. We have no athleticism. We have no one to rebound well, except for Canner at the time. No one who can block shots. And they mm -hmm. went out and got the person who was tailor-made. Ta tailor-made for it, man. So, that, that was a blessing in disguise. I thought even ISO, I, even ISO was, um, you know, he, he hit his peaks and valleys. He hit a little a lull in the midseason when he got injured. I don't remember right. it was the calf or the, or the hamstring. But um, you know, ISO came in and showed he was he was ready right away. He can be kind of like uh you would hope he's he'll be like a Lou Williams type in the future. Yeah, I think that's the ceiling, right? Six man instant offense off the bench. But for an for 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 an undrafted kid to to be that NBA ready, that was that was awesome. That was a solid pickup. But JLs, you were saying you don't, you're not so sure if it, if he's if he's more six man or if he can actually be a more complete guard. Oh yeah, I don't like I don't buy the six man thing. Like not oh, really? that he, I'm not I'm not saying he won't be a six man. Right. But I think depending on the team and opportunity, he could be more than that. Like when you look at his numbers, he's shooting like what 44 percent as a rookie from the field. And what thirty nine from three as a rookie, and his yeah. defense isn't bad. So it's like, what's really making him not be, you know, a starting caliber guard? What what is it really? It's like he needs to pass a little bit more, which he seemed like he was kind of doing towards the end of the season. Yeah, and especially to Mitch. Yeah, exactly. Especially to yeah. Mitch. And then he started to go left. He started to expand his game. Like I feel like there's like little things he has he can do to expand his game, and he can be a six man. But I can also see him. Being like a 
a starting two guard or an all star. I can see that happening for him. I mean, that would that would be amazing. Yeah, it would be, man. So yeah, I I I think you know, no doubt about it, we got the best young trio in the league in in this past draft. I think Atlanta might come in second with. Um, Trey Young and Huerta, and uh, they had another player who, who had a pretty good season as well. And Atlanta had a pretty good season. Give, give credit to them. Yeah, they, they, yeah, absolutely. You know, tank, tanking and all. They, they certainly. Yeah, that trade season. with the Mavs is looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. L- looking like an even trade for both teams. Both teams definitely, and they got a pick out of it. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely, and and you know, people weren't so sure about Trey Young. Uh, going into the draft, they yeah, me included. Him, yeah, yep. the views on him are very polarizing. I mean, some people yep. thought like he he was going to have no issues um, in becoming a star, and then other people thought, you know, with his size, that he, he was certainly going to be a boss boy. He came in. I he mean, came in some games. I, I'm the first one to admit that I thought I had the same uh, concerns about Steph Curry. So yeah. I, I think my future as a scout is uh, is is dire. Uh, i'll tell you man so i mean thinking about point guards in that regard and and kind of um you know shift into the draft what Mm -hmm. what's your take on on some of these prospects david i mean uh, where do you where do you see us what's what's your lottery prediction and uh, who would you like at that spot i mean my nightmares you know we're getting the fifth pick i Uh, just keep seeing that number five just I'm seeing it. I'm, I'm seeing it. <laughs> I hope uh, I'm wrong, man. But I'm seeing it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not one, one that's assuming that we're getting Zion, obviously. But uh, I, I, I love Ja. I think everything after that, it's like, eh. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, Culver's a nice player. There's some nice players. You know, RJ disappeared. Uh, in the in the uh, tournament there, but mm-hmm. you know I, I I still I'm still pretty high on him, but uh, but there's obviously obviously it's it's Zion and then there's a big drop off. Mm-hmm. Zion, but I would bus. be you know if we get the second pick and we take Ja, I mean I'm 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 I think I think the the uh, the 17 wins was worth it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I wouldn't argue that, man. I'm taking that all day, JLs. I'm taking. I feel you too. I, I still feel like there's a little sleeper behind the second and third. Like, I feel like Garland, man. Garland is like a like do nice prize people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garland is the shooting, the shooting. The Knicks got Garland. I think I'm pretty pretty damn happy actually. Mm. At five, right? Yeah, five, even four. Five or four, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy they're looking at as the next Dame Lillard, man. If we can, if we can get Dame Lillard, that'd be even better. But if we can get the second coming. Hey, yeah, like he's been injured. So if you see like the, the videos, the way he shoots off the dribble, like he he does he does that like no one else in this league in the uh, in the draft right now. So only I think the only reason why you know he's off the radar because he got injured. Yeah, kind right. of like Kyrie was injured. Right. So. If we don't get first or second, fourth or fifth, I'm hoping everybody else is sleeping on Garland too and we can snatch him up. Yep. Yo, so what about the, the prospects of trading down? Um, I've, we, we did the, uh, the round table last week with Nick's Film School and, and talked about that. You have Atlanta who's sitting there right now with two picks um, in the lottery. Boston, to a lesser extent, they, they've, they're a bit farther down. I believe they're at um, 15 and 20. So that's that's way too far. Down. And, they, and they have 22 as well. And Boston has right. three picks in uh, w- within, you know, the first 25. What, what would you guys think about trading down potentially if we got, say, three through five? I mean, I would potentially trade down if the guy I don't want. Like, if I knew somebody really wanted somebody at that and I could get some extra access, I would definitely – consider trading down if it's not a Zion or a job. But like I said, too, I like Garland as well. So I would try to target whoever has Garland, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> right. Yeah, David, yep. how about you, man? Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. Like I said, I mean, 
if we're not getting the first two picks, there's there's nobody that I'm like, oh, like generational talent that I I, I feel like we we have to have. Um, but uh, it'd be it'd be nice to get that first pick. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I could see it happening if a team really thought highly of maybe like R.J. Barrett. Like I see, like right, uh, if we had the third pick you may be able to swing a trade, you know, depending on how high a team like Atlanta would be in R.J. Barrett. You might be able to swing a trade for R.J. and still end up with, you know, Jared Culver, Darius Garland. That would be a nice little, you know, that would be a nice little value package right there. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be something like that. Definitely. That, That would definitely be a nice little value package right there, man. Yeah. And then the whole the whole Phoenix thing, I think that's smoke. The the whole Phoenix, um, Phoenix would rather pick John Morant than Zion. I think that's smoke. What, what do you guys think? I there could be something to it. There could be something to it. I mean, me personally, I think it'd be dumb to do that to pick. <laughs> but Phoenix uh, really needs a point guard, though. Like, at the end of the day, and Phoenix isn't really the the brightest organization either. So. Yeah, they also took eight and over Luca, so you know maybe they yeah, would do that. Yeah, yeah, you know what? <laughs> You're right. They're not, you know, they don't really. <laughs> you never make know. A great move all the time, so I'm not I, counting I, that I can't out. Believe they fired. I can't believe they fired their coach already. They fired what? their coach already. That was nuts. <laughs> That was crazy, man. That that was one thing about this offseason that has been great is seeing other teams' houses burning down to the ground. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And being here in L.A., seeing the, seeing the Lakers in, in uh, chaos like this. Oh, is, oh my oh, God. God. Was burning. I was. Because once LeBron, once LeBron was coming, I didn't hear the end of it from all these garbage Lakers fans here. I didn't want LeBron to the Knicks. I didn't want him here. No, I, think I, was, I was the only one. Maybe <laughs> I was like, I don't want him here. Why? For what? Yeah, his age, his age is concerning. All the, just all those finals runs, all the all those miles, man. You know, he's he, he's a human being. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. And and with his style of play, I, like I was telling you, JLs, I I think he might fall off a cliff sooner than later. Oh yeah. In terms See, of production, Durant, Durant's going to age into that game because you know he's not going to get shorter. His shots yeah. not gonna go away, right? You know he does, and he's he doesn't bang like uh, LeBron does. So I, uh, you know, KD's gonna have better years at that age than than LeBron is. I I think. And it's funny too, cause the weight thing as well. Like if you're that age, right. and you're that thin, you don't you don't have that same wear and tear as somebody who's you know, like 200 pounds. <laughs> he's like, I don't right. know if you ever seen anybody this that that weight and that tall before, but he might be able to last a little bit longer than a lot of his counterparts who got drafted in that same year. So we'll see. Yeah, so. that that is that is crazy, man. That the, the LeBron effect is so powerful and so impactful on an organization. I don't know, man. He he might fall off a cliff sooner than later. Yep. Yeah, man. Especially because you've never had somebody who's that powerful. And aging at the same time. That seems mm-hmm. dangerous. And usually when you have these veterans who are aging, you're like, oh, well, maybe it's time to ship them out of there. You know, and then, like a, like Iverson or something, the, the organization has more power than the player. But when the player is more power, more, almost more powerful or as powerful as the organization and they're in the decline, like to navigate that is going to be a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That that's gonna be crazy, man. But um, hey, man, that that's for the Laker fans to commiserate yeah. over, man. We're we're, we're exactly. looking at other things, and um, I gotta tell you guys, man, this KD stuff, it's it's cool, but it's almost I'm almost like borderline embarrassed at this point. Embarrassed for what? <laughs> because I just the the negative part of being a Knicks fan just feels like if this doesn't happen, oh. I, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a disaster, man. It's gonna be a disaster, man. So you fear the the backlash? I, yeah, I just don't like the overconfidence. Man. You don't believe CP? That's what I'm hearing you say. I, how can, how can I, man? How, no, but you know you know what's gotten through to me the most is all the Knicks haters that are saying it's happening, like the Isolas and the exactly. Halifax. 
You know, those, those guys. Yeah, Bill Simmons. not going to be chirping that he's coming if, if he's Nope. Not. Bill Bill Simmons, you know? Yes. Yeah, Bill Simmons. It's, I don't know. Max. When Max is sitting there trying to like, oh, wait, he might be. I can't believe. And, and he's like the biggest Laker fan, Nick Hater, right now. I'm just like, yeah. Hey. I, like it has to be. I think it's something to this man. The, the overconfidence in this thing just worries me, man. I just, oh, I, I've hey, never I'm seen with it. You. I'm with I've you. I've never seen it because even even last year, I think by and large everybody knew LeBron was going to go to the Lakers, but it the 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 the, the talk. But they were they were confident about PG coming. Everybody said That's true everybody too. said PG was coming. That's true too. Paul George well, was a lock to go to the Lakers and, and he right. stunned everybody and stayed with OKC. Yep. So we'll and, see. And, and with KD being so volatile, I mean, who knew he was even gonna go to Georgia, uh, Golden State, you know? Right. That's what worries me the most, is he's so fickle. Like I I'm I'm worried like, you know, the reports finally get to him and he's like, you know what? I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going. I'm not going. <laughs> oh I want to do God. what they think I'm not going to do because they think I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the opposite, like one of those moves. Like, <laughs> I'm going to the Suns. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> what? Dude? Yeah, right, right. What? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I was just waiting for the shoe to drop, you know. And all these Knicks fans calling and complaining, Jails. It's, oh, it's, man. it's going to be nuts. It's going I mean, to be everybody nuts. else is just waiting, waiting to kill us, you know? Waiting. Waiting, waiting to kill us, man. Man, waiting. we'll be fine, man. It's not like any other year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only the most important year uh, of our lifetime. Right. <laughs> I mean, it can literally go two ways. It, it can go the slow burn rebuild or... Right. I mean, we, we can go straight to the top, man. Yeah, this is the – I mean, we haven't had anything this crazy since, what, the LeBron decision yes, year when absolutely. All, everybody was available. Exactly. And the Knicks had cat space. So, I mean, we've been through it before, kind of. You know, we survived, sort of. I hate you, <laughs> I, I hate you man. But so, this time we're a lot smarter, so, you know. Well, let's hope, man, because there's so there's so many variables at play. I mean, David, what's who's your two, I guess, ideal max talents that that you would want to bring here July first? I mean, people people kill me over this, but I I, I don't want Kyrie. <gasps> yeah, look, I love the kid. I think he's so talented as as a standalone talent. I love watching him play, but I worry about bringing KD and him in together just personality wise I, I i worry that they're both extremely sensitive and i also worry about uh about Kyrie's knees uh, for for a kid his age to already have had so many knee problems uh, that concerns me so f- for me I, I i like kd and i like kemba i know people kill me over that yeah a lot a lot of people are like kemba's against i love kemba, kemba. He goes about his business, keeps his head down. I, I, and I just think the, the, the kid is so talented. And people have been like, well, he, he's barely had any playoff experience. Like, you know, he hasn't had the success that, that, uh, that Kyrie's had. But who's been around him? Frank Kaminsky? Like, you know, that they didn't surround him with anybody in, in Charlotte. So yeah. I, I'm, 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 a big, I'm a big, big Kemba fan. So uh, to me, that would be ideal. But look. If KD, uh, KD, KD, <laughs> that's a good nickname. KD. If, if they're they're together, you know, I, I'm I'm not gonna sneeze at that. Obviously, after after all we've been through the last twenty years, that's that's an incredible one-two punch. But I, I'm if I'm looking into my crystal ball, I I would I would worry I would worry that things could go sour. I mean, it's fair. It, listen, it's a fair critique. I mean, when me and JL started talking about the Kyrie thing from even last offseason, I was concerned. You know, the knee, the knee issues are certainly a concern. But it's mm-hmm. like you said, it's like we've gone through so much that we would turn a blind eye towards the, the injury risk of both of them. Because, look, KD had a serious foot injury a couple of years ago, man. Where you That's had to true. Yeah, and everything. True. And he's at seven feet tall, running around like like a gazelle, right? You right. know, you know what I mean. And and going yeah, to 
you, you would think that they're going to go to another finals. So that's another year of mileage. Right. Yeah. You know, so that there's injury history risk with both of them. But I think, like True. you guys said, we, we've gone through so much pain. Yeah. That, yeah, we would accept it, JLs. What do you think? Yeah, and on the Kemba tip, too, like, what I'll say about Kemba is I remember when Kyrie was nice and they still wasn't made. The Cavs still weren't making the playoffs. Right, right, right. No right. one was giving Kyrie that look until LeBron came. And right. now when LeBron came and left, all of a sudden now Kyrie is a top point guard. Da, 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 da. I feel like the same thing could happen for Kemba if he's actually teamed up with somebody as talented as KD. Like he will then right. be put on a map. Yeah, be, yeah. Yeah. And then times that by being in New York, that'll be like super gas lean on the fire. Next thing you know, Kemba will be a guy, and it's like, what were we thinking? You like, I, I can definitely see that happening. Uh, now on the the Kyrie tip, I'm if Kyrie's here, I'm I'm definitely happy with Kyrie, and he's still my choice over Kemba. Yeah, only because of the age. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Um, even though I do have concerns, like you do, with, with the attitude. I'm not gonna lie, the attitude does scare me. Especially I mean, high risk, Kyrie. high reward for sure. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought Kyrie came off kind of um, real sensitive this year, with, especially with the media, man. Yeah. And talking about, hey, you know, I just want to play basketball, this, 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 that, and the third. I'm like, yo, listen, your team is like third or fourth in the East, man. Yeah. <laughs> Every, right. Everything will be okay, guys. Just take a deep breath. Yeah. You know, because he, he was carrying on at some points during the season. Like, they were, they were on the outside looking into the playoffs. Yeah. And, I, you know, I understand that's, that's a competitive spirit, but I, I'm not sure. His body language was a little bit off. You know, and the way body- he seemed to treat a lot of the young guys on the Celtics, too. I'm like, you know, we have, we have a very young team that's still developing, and, I, you know, I, he, I don't want him treating our young guys like that, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I agree, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I, think our young guys have the ego they have, though. Uh, that might be true. That might be true. Yeah, that, that's fair. Maybe ISO. Maybe. maybe, maybe, maybe ISO man. But listen, I I couldn't argue against Kemba as a Plan B man. He had his best year, um, of his career. Yep. Twenty damn near twenty six points a game, six times played all eighty two. Yep. Played eighty games last year. Played seventy nine before that, eighty one before that. I mean, Kemba's durable, man. Yeah, Kemba's durable, and it's the garden like. I understand the age factor, but listen, if Kemba comes home, forget about it. They will blow the roof. I mean, Kyrie, too, of course. Kyrie's a showman. But Kemba's like – that. that's like MSG in his blood. Yeah. That's true. I you keep forgetting I mean? Kyrie's the North Jersey guy, too. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm sure Kyrie would be a killer here. And I, right. I would it, but Kemba's, Kemba's got MSG in his veins. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh man, yeah, I'm a UConn fan, so I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> a lot of good memories at the Garden. For a lot college. of good memories, man. You you kind of had some good teams, man. Really. Oh, yeah, and he's a killer too, man. Don't forget, killer Kemba is a killer. He just oh yeah, Kem- <laughs> Kemba is a killer, man. So I mean, honestly, I w- I would take any of the I call them the five Ks. I mean, you see what Kawhi Leonard did yesterday. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, that boy is a problem, and but he's yep. another one. Like you just don't know what he's thinking, right? You just don't know what he's thinking, man. He um, seems so low key too. I feel, I feel like yeah. you know he's. Uh, I don't know. I'm interested to see how how far the Raptors go this year because, like, if they get to the finals, I mean, is he really, is he really still going to the Clippers? I right. Mean, yeah. That, that's hard to walk away from that. That's hard. That's, hard. Away from. <laughs> that's a solid team, and Siakam is such a beast. <clears throat> right. Siakam and and oh, Kawhi Leonard, come on, man. That yeah, team, man. I mean, they are like, you know, when you talk about positionless basketball and the type of flexibility that those guys can give you, man. With yeah. Scott, swing span. You got Ibaka out there. Um, they're a good team. They're a good team. Oh, yeah. yeah Kyle yeah. Lowry's the only one holding them back, JLs. Like I, I know. Yeah, it is, man. <laughs> they need it. Maybe they need Kimber. <laughs> <laughs> but, JL, but JL said Kyle Lowry was elite. Two days later, he puts up zero points against DJ Augustine. And oh, man. <laughs> At home. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, man. 
<laughs> it was funny. That was karma, dog. That's that is karma. When the Raptors was killing us, when Frank had zero points in the regular season. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was karma. It came right back to haunt me. Yeah, zero I'm points for Kyle you, Lowry in the playoffs. I felt I felt felt bad for DeRozan yesterday. That was a weird day for DeRozan. First, like he sees his replacement score forty-five in the second round, and then he gets knocked out. Yeah, horrible game. And and on that last possession where he was just like they, yeah, what was that, that? That just ended. I I I mentioned it to um Tommy Beer. I said that game ended like a preseason game. It really did. It was like man, everybody just wanted to get get home and have dinner as soon as possible. It's like, what? Yo. <laughs> they couldn't even get a shot off in the end. Like, oh, man, that was, that's a terrible way for Pop to go out. But he's a legend. Yep. He'll be all right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. It'll, it'll shift his focus to, to attacking Trump on Twitter. Right. Know, through, through the pain. Drinking his wine. Drinking his wine, you know. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, man. So, I'm, you know, like I said, it's just so much stuff between the draft, then free agency, but then it's it's the draft and free agency when you talk about Anthony Davis, right? Right. Because I, you know, what we were saying on, on the round table is like if you let's say everything works out, everything works out in terms of number one pick, Katie Kyrie. Right. Are you now gonna the the, the organization has been preaching all year? We're not gonna skip steps. We're not gonna take shortcuts. Mm-hmm. This that and the third. Now you have Anthony Davis and the Pelicans ringing your phone off the hook. Yep. <laughs> because you know it's going to happen. You right. You know it's going to happen. And the first thing they're going to say is Mitch. Mitch. and Z- Well, Zion and Mitch. Mm-hmm. And so, David, you alluded to it earlier. You, don't, you know, you're, you're a little reluctant to, to fall in love with Mitch's game because you just feel like it, it's set up for heartbreak if they ship him out for AD. What, right. what do you think, man? Would you would you pull the trigger on that? I mean, you're you're insane not to take a D, right? Like you kind of have to do it. Yeah, that was, that's uh, what I was saying. Tails, it's hard, man. It's I know it's hard, yo. I know it's like uh, I'm not saying it's not an easy choice, but a D is seven foot in the five five. And <laughs> No, and he's not, but, no, he's not 30 either. He's 25. <laughs> right. No, everybody talks about, uh, you know, Perzingis being the unicorn. Like, AD is really the true he's unicorn. The, real one. I mean, the, thing, the thing that guy does at his size is incredible. Yeah, incredible. AD is the unicorn, man. Wow. AD ate up KP. Do you remember when he came to the card and – Okay, I think he would like drop forty. Yeah, of course, of, of oh. course, shooting threes. Shooting yeah, but that's like that's like every superstar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. But... Everybody comes to the garden has the best game of their career. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> has a career night of the Knicks right. at the Knicks' expense. But oh. I mean, if 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 KD and Kyrie are already there, and you add AD, I mean, uh, the Knicks are immediately Finals favorite, right? But, who, but, like, but who's the supporting cast? I mean, me. in this trade, right, right, in right, this right. trade, you got to trade Zion. You're probably gonna have to trade Mitch. You probably gonna, you have to trade because salaries, right? You're gonna have to trade Zion, Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith Jr., um, Frank, and you might even have to throw in Mitch, or you you have to throw in one of those future firsts that you got from Dallas. Right, yeah. right, right. Which, right. which I would, if I don't have to part with Mitch, I would do that trade. I'd probably do that trade. I, I I do wonder, I do wonder if you're if you're able if, if you're giving them Zion and Kevin Knox and a pick and a first rounder, I I I think that might get it done. You saw you still have to put in more salary though. Because he who's gonna give a better uh, deal than that? See Zion and Kevin Knox. Yeah, you guys, you still got match salary. You see, yeah, you still got to put the salary up. That's why you got to put DSJ and Frank in there as well. Yeah, definitely DSJ. Which I don't, you know, I don't mind. I would, right, I don't mind. I don't want to trade. Yeah, him. I'm, I'm, I'm not too. To be honest, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not big on DSJ. But uh, especially if Ky- if Kyrie's there already. Oh then, yeah, I'm trading DSJ. You know, if Kyrie yeah. comes. I'm because, trading DSJ. So Zion, DSJ, Knox, two first rounders. For, for, for AD, mm-hmm. 
I would do that. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, oh. Let's go. I mean, Jesus. And you know what? And I think they would do that because I don't think anyone else has given them a deal that good. Yeah. But Zion being in, the, in, in that whole package gives them something. Immediate. It has right. to. It has right. to just on the hype alone. Mm-hmm. But I, th- I still think in the, uh, you can't count out Danny, Danny Ainge. Because I still think, yeah, depending true. on how they do in this next round and maybe beyond, I think they might put Tatum in a, in a deal. Oh, he's gone. Right. And yeah. that might get – you know, you get AD, you get Kyrie, I think. I think. I'm not sure how, what, how motivated Kyrie is to leave Boston because he claims, he, you know, he wants to win. You get him, you get him Anthony Davis on that team, that might change things. And they have three first yeah, but numbers. Tatum- I mean, Tatum's – I feel like Tatum's stock really fell this year, though. Yeah. He took such a step backwards. I, I don't know. I'd take Zion over Tatum. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. I'm just thinking, you know, the C's. But the, they have so much – and shit. They just always have – why does it feel like they always have, like, like five or six first-rounders? It's Danny Ainge, team, I mean, a lot of those came from that stupid Nets trade. From the Nets. Thank, thank you, Nets. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, You're not Nets. better than us. Thank you, Nets. No. They thank the Nets for that one, man. Yeah, it came oh, from thank, it came from the Rondo trade. They only won and, one game because I was re- I was getting so tired of hearing about. Oh, they were yeah. getting obnoxious, man. Oh, they were getting man. NBA uh, uh, hipster NBA Twitter, man. They were just so in love with <laughs> the Nets. <laughs> like, <laughs> the Nets. You even watch the Nets are the kings of the city. The Nets are the kings of the city. Like, stop. Yeah. Please stop. It. Please lowest attendance in the league. Yeah, the Kings of New York. Kings of New York, man. These <laughs> Nets fans. It's just that little brother complex. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like, I don't, you're a Yankees fan, David. So it's like, you know, it's like the Mets fan when the Mets were competing, you know, the few right. times in, in the early 2000s and the other uh, couple years ago when they went to the World Series. Right, it's right. It's that little, it's the Jets fan. They like to knock the Giants. Oh, you should have right, took Arnold, right. blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it's that little brother complex that the, that the Nets fan has, man. Hey, I get it. I get it. It's it's the people like who aren't even like New York sports fans that are like getting into it. Like yeah. all the all the Nets are dope. It's like eh. <laughs> shut, up. shut up, man. <laughs> I I don't see it, JLS. I don't see the Nets really being a contender for either one of these guys. Um, I don't see it. I don't. I don't see it. Nah, I know Jonathan Macri is like super worried about it. Nah, I'm not worried about it. Why? Why? You know, Jared Dudley even came out and basically, through lesser words, said, "We're not the choice." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said they got the better practice facility. Like that is gonna sway somebody's opinion. <laughs> like, oh, they they got nicer jacuzzis at this one in Brooklyn. We're right. talking about practice. Okay. We're talking about practice, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, like I said in the interview, that there's no doubt about it. It's about the the brand if somebody's gonna leave yep. a better situation than golden state the best situation you can have it's not you're not just gonna want to just come to new york it's about coming to new york and playing in msg playing for the knicks and yeah. proving to the whole world that you could put this team with it with a little help on your back and win yep yeah it just makes sense that's that's the thing i've told people that are like oh do you think you really think KD's coming? It's like it just it, it makes sense for him. If if I was his agent and who who we know is grew up a Knicks fan, why like why would you go anywhere else? It just makes sense. Definitely, and it just seems like perfect the story, the perfect trap for him here too. Yeah, yeah. Everybody and his mom already. Oh, Trier is here. His best friend DeAndre is here. Yeah, you got like, Royal Ivy and his bow yeah. ties and shit. Yep. yep. We just know much, yeah, it's like it seems like it was set up from the jump. Yep. <laughs> I I think he's crazy. Uh, I think I think it's just, it's a kamikaze mission. Like, what are you doing, man? Right. <laughs> you know. But I mean, look after three straight championships. I mean, I, I guess he's trying to chase the unicorn, literally. Right. Which, which to me is, is nuts, but hey, I'll take it as a Knicks fan. No well, welcome, welcome aboard, buddy. Absolutely. <laughs> welcome to the insane asylum. Yeah, man. <laughs> the cesspool. Join us. 
<laughs> I saw a lurking, lurking around the corner. Oh man, I got yo. I would be so happy to see the Knicks winning just to see if I solo could spin his way out of that one. Right. Oh man, I, I don't know. <laughs> Dave, David, what, what's your relationship like, like with the uh, with, with the beat writers, man? How do, how do you feel about some of these guys? Pretty, pretty good, pretty good. Not with I, I don't have a relationship with Isola, but I, um, I know Bondi fairly well. Yeah, and uh, and Steve Popper, and uh, I used to troll uh, Ally on his own uh, all the time. When he was, <laughs> <laughs> he's the by far the most fun to to troll because you troll him, and then all the other beat writers like hop on board. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I always see them clowning Ally on his own. Oh, yeah, it's the best. Definitely. The best. I'm sad yeah, he's on the had to go back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw uh, I saw Bourbon at the at the mid signing. I was talking to him for a little bit. Oh, nice. Yeah, all those guys are all those guys are cool. Uh, I I know Begley a little bit, but I I know Bondi the best. Which it's it's been killing me that he like basically became like a Nets beat writer this season. I hate you know. I understand he has his issues with with Dolan, but man, you don't have to take it out on the team like that. <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah. kind of seemed like he, he was he on that so like that ready. axe to grind type of thing, man. But he keeps yeah. denying it. Yeah. It seems like, not so about up. you, man. Not about you. Right. Oh man. Oh man, it's it's. Uh, and he it chose never... to focus on the bad stuff, you know. I mean, a lot of the, look, you know, especially for. Eisman and, and Berman and Popper, they're traveling with the team every damn game. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. That's grueling, and you got to cover a bad team. But there were things to write about. I mean, Ian Begley showed you how to do it. You know, yeah. there, there are positive things you could focus on, or you could just, like, you know, be upset that the team's not winning and focus on the, you know. And throw daggers. Yeah, yeah. throw daggers, focus on the, the Perzinga situation, focus on, you know, like just go after Fizdale. You know, we can't really I, – I, all the judgment of Fizz to me is like just getting way, way ahead of themselves. You know, I, I, you really can't judge Fizz. Not yet. Not with the team that he had to, to work with this season. That you know? that's kind of where JL's. I, I thought Bondy was kind of going overboard with with all that. Like, totally. Yeah. His promise. Yeah, the stuff about his... him saying they were, you know, this was the plan and it wasn't yeah. the plan. And it's like, oh, when like when are you supposed to take these guys at 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 their word on everything? They, they're yeah, politicians, what's he man. <laughs> what's he supposed to say at the beginning of the season? Nah, we're tanking. We're going to try to lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, JL's way in on this. Yeah, like, I, you already know how I feel about this. We talked about this so much. Fizz just needs the horses, man. He just needs the horses. Yep. And then once we get the horses, then we can really see what he's going to do. He's done well. He, like, he hasn't been coaching that long, but we've seen that when he does have horses, he's able to actually put together a competent team when he's there with the Grizzlies. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt and see what happens when when we had to pop the, teeth, the proper pieces in New York. And hopefully these media guys kind of just, you know, stay off of them. It's funny. The fans seem to understand it more than some of these guys. Like, I feel like yeah. the fans are more, like, flexible. I think it's it's been fairly mixed. I mean, you ask the fans on our show, JL, some of them are out for blood. <laughs> <laughs> you feel, I feel like there's always somebody out for blood, but I feel like it's more pro than con. I don't yeah. know. Maybe, maybe it's me. I love that you guys do the the uh, the the calls because it reminds me of like it's like late night WFAN like I'll call. tell you man it's, it's <laughs> starting it's starting yeah, to take yeah, that route it's starting to take that route man but now nah, it's been a yeah, lot yeah. of fun no nah, I love it love it yeah man Ho- hopefully things get better as uh, as things progress with the team no doubt about it man mm-hmm. yep yep. Absolutely, man. Well, hey, listen, we'll, we'll see what happens, man. As the world turns, Knicks edition. Obviously, May fourteenth is, is the first first of many um, dates. You know that'll determine our fate, man. But David, definitely appreciate you coming on. Hey, my pleasure, out. boys. My pleasure. Great, great to be on. Love what you guys do, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll I'll come back on when uh, hopefully uh, things are starting to pop. Absolutely, man. We're definitely going to do this again. Um, just let the people know where they can find you and um, what you're up to these days. Uh, I'm in a, a show uh, called uh, Unbelievable. It hasn't come out yet on Netflix. Got a little part on that. Uh, probably be out later this year. 
Okay. Um, and then uh, until then, uh, I uh, I have a jokey NBA podcast called The Super Hoopers. Okay. You can find us on uh, on Twitter at, at The Super Hoopers. And then uh, I'm constantly posting, uh, you know, Nick's memes and complaining about Nick's garbage <laughs> on uh, my own personal Twitter at, at David Feudernick. So you can hit me up. There, there you go. And, and JLs, you know, our favorite one was the whole team joint. Yes. Whole team. Whole that team. is when I found you. Yeah. The whole team. <laughs> the whole team. That, I was like, what is this? Yeah. No, we, whole... do, uh, we do a segment uh, every week on the podcast called Get At Me Dog. And we have a, a specific NBA player that week. And we tweet at them. And then we get points if they respond. So, so Dot was <laughs> uh, our, our guy that week. So, uh, so not only was it was it awesome he retweeted it, but he got me got me uh, to win the game that week. So nah, that's nice. tough, man. Well, very <laughs> worthy, absolutely, man. So, all right, fellas, Thank we'll you, definitely bro. once again, man, appreciate the time, and um, we will chat again for sure, man. Thanks again, and for all of those of you watching, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you check us out on uh, YouTube.com/slash/KnicksFanTV, YouTube.com/slash/NickaTimeShow. Subscribe to the channels so we'll catch up with you guys. Peace.